Well, we need a lot of investment on statistics and data. For instance, if you take the two most used statistical series, which are national accounts, so you know what is the size and the structure of the economy, or demographic statistics, so you know your population. In most African countries, we are dealing with projections. There are about 12 countries that have statistics up to date, and all the rest are estimates, projections, which means we don't know. Uh, but it's good to know what we don't know, so we have to make an effort to really improve. It has tremendous implications on the narratives about Africa. Well, for once, uh, we know that industrialization in all other regions of the world have been done on the basis of very heavy carbon footprint. So now we are talking about retrofitting in most of these countries, uh, equipment, infrastructure, and methods of production. So we have a lower carbon footprint. But Africa can just leapfrog. It doesn't need to go through those steps. Uh, for instance, we can power most of our industrialization with renewable energy. We just happen to have the largest reservoir in the world of renewable energy. So why go the route that the others did? Uh, that's one example. Another example is the use of technologies for frugal innovation. For instance, Africa has the largest number of people using mobile banking transfers. That means, you know, very clean and proper way of disseminating capital that others are struggling to introduce because they have very heavy systems in place. So that's what leapfrogging is all about. Africans try not to imitate the path that others went, but rather jumping into uh, the queue uh, so that they become faster and quicker in reacting to the new innovation. Enormous. If you look into the Paris Agreement, although it is mostly non-committal, uh, Africans in, on a voluntary basis have some of the most ambitious targets. I think it's a good demonstration of the need for Africans not to just be recipients of aid and help for adaptation to climate change, but rather to be protagonists and be ahead in terms of proposing solutions. So when you think that most of Africa's money from exports is coming from extractive industries and that most of these minerals are not treated, valued in Africa, they are exported halfway around the world to be processed. And then they are exported again halfway around the world once processed. Why not make Africa part of the chain and therefore contributing to the global value but also creating opportunities for people to rise out of poverty. That would be fantastic just from an economic and social point of view, but even more important from an environmental point of view.